Right, yeah. we were talking about risk premium a little while ago. Mm. Let's go through it again. And obviously we've got uh, quite a lot to add to this. So sure. uh, tell me about what it actually stands for and what it means for investors right now. Well, risk premium is the rate of return that you can make over and above the cash rate. And it obviously, it, it, it's, it's often is an input into asset allocation decisions and, and the like. So, you know, people will make a decision to put money into equities if they know they can beat the cash rate. And uh, that over the long term in South Africa obviously exists and it exists internationally as well. But the problem is that as inflation moves up and quite aggressively so, you know, it obliterates basically what you can make in equities. And equity returns squeeze down and this risk premium then, you know, collapses completely. And your problem is institutional market and for private investors is that this is a bit, a bit of an elusive concept you know to, to chase this risk premium that sometimes expands dramatically like it did this year or collapses completely like it did last year becomes kind of you know where is this thing going to be going and what should it what should uh, what should happen and, and, and how should we treat uh, the risk premium at the end of the day now I think that the big thing is that if you look over time people have not asked the question how do we get a more robust risk premium the question has always been, well, if we can't get the risk premium right, what can we do in order to try and, um, and, and, and deal with the consequences of getting the risk premium wrong? And that's where portfolio insurance comes in. And you know, issues such as, well, let's try and do liability matching with a, you know, with a great portion of the portfolio and with maybe with a rest with a portion of a portfolio, you know, you sit and you do things such as you know, you try and chase you know, return type opportunities. But those things deal with consequences. They don't deal with the actual risk premium. And maybe by looking at uh, at value as a concept and understanding value value stocks as a concept, maybe that's an answer to uh, to to the risk premium problem. Well, just taking a look at the risk that lies in the market right now, because we don't really know where we're going. We heard that the U.S. is officially out of recession, and that's according to a group of economists, the NBER, that officially declares whether we are in a recession or not. Uh, so there, are, there is quite a lot of optimism uh, coming through on the equity front, and I think a lot of the bad news has already been priced in, and a lot of the good news has been priced in. So taking that all into account, how do you play the markets, and also taking the risk premium into consideration? Well, I mean, I think the big thing is, I mean, you just, you just mentioned Johnson & Johnson. I mean, Johnson and Johnson is a is kind of a stalwart business on the Dow Jones and the S and P. They it's a it's a it's a large annuity based business that is not only in generic drugs and stent research, but it will sell you anything from you know the baby powder on the other end, which is very consumer focused. Now it can you know it's 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 understandable that when a business like that comes out with a flat forecast or with a flat earnings number or with a slightly worse than expected earnings number, that the market goes okay. Well, if this is happening to an annuity based business, you know what are the what are the implications for other types of businesses, you know, which are maybe far, far more cyclical in nature? The point, though, is that up to now, you've seen a massive amount of money being pumped into the system. Okay, and this will create inflation at some point. Now, we don't know how long that'll be. You know, already the Federal Reserve has really spoken about keeping rates as low as they possibly can. But when there are signs of inflation and a recovering economy, they will start raising rates. Now, that could be a year out. That could be two years out. That could be four years out. We don't actually know what that, what, what that cycle looks like. In the meantime, markets are continuously trying to appraise where earnings are going to be going. And that's why we've seen this massive run-up in markets. And if you look at it from an international perspective, and actually in a South African context as well, if you look at... If you look at prices in March for the market, March indicated a complete meltdown. Mm. Businesses won't survive anymore. Okay. Whereas if you look at it today, you're looking at businesses trading at net asset value, slightly ahead of net asset value, it means there's normality. Businesses are now trading off a base. They're not appraising future earnings in, into the price yet. And as soon as that starts happening, the market will start continuously moving, moving higher. Now, there's quite a lot of money that is sitting on the sidelines at this stage. And let's yeah. just look at the liquidity levels that we're experiencing now. Let's say in comparison to about 50 years ago, where there were marked professionals in the market. And now we've even got things like day traders, which obviously also cause quite a lot of volatility. Yeah, I mean, that is, that, that, is, that is an opportunity and a risk for the market because you've got markets that move up far more aggressively today and then bounce back very much more aggressively as well because you don't have, you just have so many more participants in the market. All of that, obviously, if we spoke about risk premium just now, collapses and increases the risk premium on a continuous basis. And that's why valuation becomes so important when you look at stocks. I mean, there's been a whole bunch of studies that been, that's been done around value, value stocks and what's called the value risk premium. If you buy good quality stocks at low prices and you prepare to hold them through time, you should be making money and you shouldn't have to worry about this, this risk premium and the elusive risk premium that continues to you know, increase and decrease. I mean, the this, this study in South Africa has been done by, by Adrian Saville from, from Canon Asset Managers. Um, you know, he looks over 13 years and he's done the study every single year. He buys the worst 47 stocks he can find on average. 
He builds a portfolio, so everything else has been shunted by the market, and he creates a per annum return of 24.24% per annum, you know, which is, if you look at the long-term return on all share, that's about 16% per annum. Um, you know, he beats the market, and he beats cash by handsome amounts, I think, out of the but whole study. But I would study. say that's taking quite a lot of risk on board. Well, that's exactly the point, is that if you buy a business that is priced for perfection, you're hoping that perfection will play itself out in the future. Whereas if you're pricing a business where there's no perfection that's priced in, you're only, you're only hoping for a slightly better day tomorrow to get a price appreciation. Right, uh, Kirby, and just your, your final word on where the markets are going right now. Um, just taking a look at earnings season in the U.S. And you mentioned Johnson, Johnson & Johnson uh, that missed uh, a forecast. We had Intel out with results. And, of course, we've still got to see the numbers coming through from the big banks. And I also mentioned the fact that uh, investors are now looking for uh, revenue growth rather than cost-cutting measures. What are you looking for in those earnings? Well, I think, I think the, big next, the, big, the, big move, the next big move in the market is, is revenue growth. So you're going to find revenue growth that starts surpassing analyst you know, uh, expectations and we're coming from a very, very low base. And obviously, based upon that, you know, as that starts moving, that's going to be the next catalyst for the market to move higher. I can't see the market moving down 40 or 50% again unless there's a cataclysmic event that happens internationally, such as, a nuclear, such as nuclear fallout, hypothetically, that could obviously move markets that, that low. But we're in a norm, normal type situation, and we, we're just trying to ride out a storm, and we're waiting for earnings. And once that happens, then today's prices are going to seem very cheap relative to where stocks will move.